Hello, everyone. I'm Asaf from Permit.io, and I'm going to, to talk about OPPO, the Open Policy Administration Layer, and how it can help uh, build uh, cloud-native permissions more easily. Sorry about that. Yeah. So you just got your project to build in-house permissions. Um, but you need to understand permissions are hard. Okay, so um, there's a lot of uh, modern challenges like microservices. Uh, infrastructure was not what it used to be 10 years ago. And now uh, I cannot just embed permission logic into my application because uh, I need to enforce access across many services. Some of them are third-party services as well. Um, modeling permissions is really difficult. While all developers almost know what role-based access control is, eventually you'd want to move to more complex systems. Let's say you want to get access based on the user location. You cannot do that with role-based access control. You probably want to move to attribute-based access control. Or if you want to get access based on ownership, uh, more fine-grained permissions, you probably need relationship-based access control. So these kind of challenges uh, are, are difficult because um, these systems are uh, difficult to grasp and are difficult to implement. And finally, there are mounting security uh, and compliance uh, standards that we need to adhere to. We all like our privacy, but it comes with a price and implementation. We need built-in auditing. We need checks and balances, for example. Uh, I want to be able to say who can even change the policy uh, inside my application. So off C for off C. This is also important. Um, and all of these challenges are the reason that broken access control is the top uh, top issue in OWASP top 10. So 94% of applications were tested for broken access control. And uh, we want to avoid these pitfalls in our implementation. So the first one that we see most, I'm sorry, most commonly in coupling application logic and authorization logic. Um, you may want to start with just like admin and not admin for permissions, and that's okay. But if you encode this logic in an if branch in your code, eventually you'll get this code block. And while this is a, a, like completely fine for monolith applications, when you get to microservices, it completely breaks because um, you'd need to duplicate that logic across all your services and duplication leads to drift and drift leads to um, security incidents. So we don't want that. We want to put everything in one microservice in one place. Uh, the second kind of thing that we see is mixing up authentication and authorization. So uh, we see implementations where people just take um, claims from Okta and just put them in JSON web tokens and just check that in code. And that is fine, but it has a few downsides. So organization roles are not the same as application roles. If I'm the head of IT, I shouldn't have admin access to the financing app. So some translation from organization roles to application roles needs to be made. And um, another thing is that uh, JOT tokens are not storage. They are limited by the HTTP header size. So eventually when you have more fine grain access, uh, you uh, will exceed this limit. And uh, lastly, um, this is not flexible if you want to change the permissions for a user mid-session because the user has a JOT, it logs in, everything's fine. Uh, next time you re-logs in, this will be applied, but this is not flexible enough. And uh, finally, not planning ahead. So this is completely fine, with, like starting with something simple, but let's hope you do better and the app will grow and more demands will come. So demands from customers, you'll have uh, this really great deal that could be great for the company with an enterprise customer and they need finer grain permissions and now you need to build that into your application really fast or uh, you want to expose API keys through your application. You need API key management. Um, all of these demands uh, will come and you want to build a system flexible enough so that it can grow over time without being so painful to rewrite from scratch every time. Uh, so let's talk about the best practices. Really briefly, you want to decouple policy from code you want to be able to respond uh, to events real time, okay? Uh, you want to have the GitOps workflow for policy. 
you want back office for stakeholders and you want interfaces for customers and I will go um, and I will go over them uh, one by one so first uh, decoupling policy from code we already agreed this is a great idea uh, and a really cool project that most people know right now is uh, OPA this is the most adopted policy agent currently in the market and uh, OPA lets you express policy as rego code and uh, data is JSON and this is great you can just create all the policy in the organization in rego and just manage that uh, OPA does have one downside it was um, originally made for Kubernetes admission control and, and uh, it cannot actually respond uh, to events in real time so for applications this is breaking and that is why we made OPAL so OPAL is an administration layer for OPA that gives you two main things uh, first GitOps and second uh, real-time updates so I'll go over them with OPAL uh, each OPAL client manages a single OPA agent and then it can be managed by an OPAL server that can run in a cluster so the OPAL server's job is to track a Git repo and serve that policy from there uh, it also can push real-time updates like JSON patches to the OPAL client and from that to the policy agent and uh, finally OPAL client can actually access data that the OPAL server cannot you can send an instruction to OPAL client even if they are in a separate network to bring uh, data from let's say uh, an in-house database that shouldn't be exposed to an outside network um, OPAL is extensible it has a plugin mechanism called fetchers so we already have fetchers for LDAP, MongoDB, uh, Stripe etc and um, you can use them if you want everything is open source um, so OPAL gives you the ability to manage policy in Git why is this so good? yes so with GitOps for policy your policy is auditable you can see who made the changes were the authors you can see all the uh, you can use signed commits and the entire history is available to you uh, it's immutable rolling back is easy it's super easy and also it gives you the power of CI CD you can have tests you can have approvals with PRs uh, for something sensitive you can have multiple approvals and you can have quality signals so with OPA you can have policies that are not as performant as other policies there, there is a meaning how you write your policy so you can just have a, a code signal in your CI CD that says if the policy is too slow it will affect my app SLA and please let me know um, so all that power is available to you if you manage all your policy agents with OPAL uh, <laughs> so if you want to talk more about OFZ uh, please come find us at booth SU25 we're also available for Slack and uh, Opal is available at opal.ac, it's Apache 2. Uh, so uh, thank you very much.